redemption. I gave you the first phase of redemption. Uh, we kind of just dealt with some things concerning what it means, and uh, we began to see how God uh, has shaping uh, us into redeeming us back to himself. Uh, he made this atonement uh, for us so that we wouldn't be eternally damned for the sin, the original sin. We wouldn't be eternally uh, in hell for the sin. Are you hearing me? So he paid a price as a portion of the buyback. It was his portion to buy us back. It was his portion to recover us. It was of his portion to redeem us for the fault or the mistake that happened in our life. When I say in our life, I don't mean just something you did. I'm talking about to the original sin. That's the real sin, the original sin. Uh, we often play out what happened in the original sin, but the original sin is already set in Adam and Eve. Are you hearing me? So we, we uh, when we're in our sinful nature, our, our period of sinfulness, we live out the things that happen concerning Adam and Eve. In other words, we relive it because we didn't accept the coupon that says redeem for the value. Are you hearing me? But when you accept it, you, you can take it and say, okay, I, I have been redeemed. Therefore, whatever uh, was spent to get me into a sinful nature, uh, the buyback plan have now removed me from that plan, that old plan, that old sinful nature that means to go, go to hell. Are you hearing me? That means to be in eternal damnation. That means to be in the lake of fire, brimstone, gnashing of teeth, wailing. Are you hearing me? So whatever put me in there doesn't matter because I have a coupon of release that says I have been redeemed. And what's on the coupon is Jesus. Through Jesus, we have been redeemed. So what we do in uh, confessing and proclaiming him as Lord and Savior, we're receiving our coupon, the coupon of life, that says this person is in an unauthorized location called damnation. And because they have their walking papers, everyone that's in that unauthorized location must free them, must let them go. Are you hearing me? And if there's any trouble with you being free, you call on the name that's on the redeeming coupon. Are you hearing me? When you call on the name, he, he, he comes in the form of a rescuer because somebody don't want to hear the name. Are you hearing me? There's someone that think that they, uh, they still own you. There's demons and devils that think that they own you. There's dark spirits that believe that they own you as the price of longevity of you serving them at one point in life. They believe they own you and have a right to you. They stole your identity and live as you. Speak as you. Talk as you. And they believe they still own you just because you spent so much time with them. But I thank God that through Jesus, even the time is redeemed. Oh, come on, give him a praise through that. So it doesn't matter how long you were in an unauthorized location, they still have to free you because you having life uh, is not predicated upon how long you sinned. <laughs> oh, you got to help me. Doesn't matter if it was 20, 30 years. The life that Jesus gave you, uh, he, he redeemed the time that you were going to sin that you were going to live in sin, that you were going to live in unrighteousness. He redeemed the whole time and said, time is now. Are you hearing me? Life is now. Are you hearing me? Recovery is now. Redemption is now. 
So any force that didn't want to release you, you had to show him the script that you have been freed. Are you hearing me? And that the same authority that rests with the freer rests with the free. <laughs> Are you hearing me? <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> the same authority that rests in Christ Jesus, he's the freer. It's the same authority that rests in you, the one who he freed. Are y'all hearing me? So what he declared, you declare. What he spoke, you speak. What he said, you say. What he did, you do. What he didn't do, <laughs> are you hearing me? Tell somebody, I've been redeemed. First Peter. Go to chapter one. And we'll rest. At verse number 17. First Peter chapter one. Verse number 17. And I'm going to read and talk and read and preach and read and teach and read and prophesy and read and apostolize and read and, okay? Because I've, I feel a need to walk through this, that we don't miss this. This, this would for sure... Uh, solidify your positioning in Christ Jesus if you can understand what he's talking about in redemption are you hearing me and this is the touch of our uh, this is the talk topic point of our um, of our vow of this year redemption verse 17 says and if ye call on the father who without respect of persons judges according to every man's work past the time of your sojourning here in fear. So God checks out our works. He judges our works and make a determination on how long we should be in a temporary stay. How quickly uh, he passed the time of our, of your, says, of your sojourning here. That's a, that's a temporary stay. How long are you going to hang out there in a temporary stay? He looks at our works. And when I say works, I'm not just talking about how much you do. But what are your works? Are you hearing me? Because uh, many times the works we get caught up in are unprofitable. Oh, come on, somebody. The things we do have been unprofitable for many years, unprofitable. But we repeat them every year as if though some profit will change its mind and come out of them all of a sudden. We repeat unnecessary things that work against who we are, the core principle of who we are. We repeat it every year in hope of a different outcome. When the works that we're doing are unprofitable, for sure the results we're getting are going to be unprofitable. So it's not how much work you're doing. It's what are you doing? 
Are you doing something to where uh, it's not baseless, but it's something that is written? Do you have a word to go with what you're doing? Do you have any tool of progression whatsoever that's founded in the Lord somewhere that 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 uh, validates what you're doing so that you're not working in the area of 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 of, uh, of mismanagement and things being uh, unprofitable in your life? If you start out in something that is profitable, then the only thing that can happen in in, in the process is how we're managing it. How we're doing it. But a lot of times we don't make it to the how. We, we just stop at the what. And a lot of times it's not just you made bad decisions and things like that. A lot of times that's all you have. That's all you've been taught. You came up through an environment that, w- that didn't teach you anything. So everything that you have, you obtained yourself through a process of trial and error. But pro- trial and error doesn't validate you for life. It validates you for the moment because you can do a trial and error last year and it came out okay because some mercy or grace happened to find you. You can try the same trial and error in 15 and it won't work. We said, well, I did it last year. I don't know why this failed. I've, I've been doing this for 20 years. I don't know why all of a sudden it failed. Because the trial and error is not a validator. You have to have some substance and evidence that validates what you are doing. If not, you're working on vague principles that are unfounded. And you're, uh, in other words, as people say, you're just doing stuff. Oh, Lord, it ain't beat down Sunday. Don't worry. I'm just I'm just trying to get you somewhere. Amen. Tell your neighbor it's not beat down Sunday. I don't been to beat down Sunday and it's not beat down Sunday. (laughs) Are you hearing me? The first birth gave me violations. The first birth gave me uh, incompetence, gave me insecurity. The first birth gave me lack. It gave me destruction. The first birth gave me all kind of things in my life that I really couldn't use to get any kind of profitability going in my life. So God said he understands the first birth. So I'm going to send my son through the first birth uh, so that you can be returned and be born again. Are you hearing me? Tell somebody you must be born again. And you must be born again because, watch this, the first birth is where the corruption lies. Are you hearing me? Oh, Lord. The first that had nothing to do with me. And I've been putting forth some things that don't represent me as really who I am. And all that stuff came from the first birth. But I thank God for Jesus that he has equipped me and allowed me to go away from the first, to come out of the first birth and be born again unto him unto a new seed. Are you hearing me? Oh, I don't know if you are. Let's check. The only way you reach a state of profitability in your life uh, is that the seed cannot be corrupt. You cannot start off your journey with a corrupt seed and expect for the fruit to be all good. Can I help somebody? The seed has to be right because it's the foundation of things. It's the foundation of growth. It's the foundation of profitability. It's the foundation of forward progress. You don't come to the table and start off with fruit. You come to the table and start off with a seed. You need a foundation that gets you in a proper place with God so you can move forward. And as that seed grows, then your faith can cause it to grow above every other herb that is in the field. Are you hearing me? Tell somebody, change the seed. Change the seed. Now watch this. See, he no better do that again because it make me preach hard. <laughs> oh, Lord. Y'all want me to go without Mike again? Yeah. <laughs> but watch this. <laughs> but watch this. 
The seed has to be changed so that you can have a new start. So then everything that you do in the new start has to conform to the seed that is in you. In the seed is where redemption lies. So God had to send Christ as a new seed. He put redemption in the new seed. When you receive of the new seed, everything around you begins to conform to the seed that is in you. Are you hearing me? Oh, it ends up dead because your, that seed towers over. It grows over, above every other herb in the field. It grows over, it towers over it. So what's ever under it can't get in the sun. Oh, Lord. What's under it can no longer steal your source of light. That's why Christ said, I cannot return until I have put all things under my feet, because if I let anything get above the towering process, that's what's going to steal your light. That's what's going to steal your joy. Are you hearing me? So in order to move somewhere in God, I must first understand that the seed has to be changed. How is this? Let's see. Let's see how the seed is changed. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by So the word in me determines the seed that's in me. If there is no word in you, there is no seed in you. Oh, Lord Jesus, help us this morning. So you can't just be good people and try to do something that's going to profit. You can't just be a church goer and try to do something that's going to profit. Are you hearing me? You can't just hang with church people and thinking you're going to profit because church people are profiting. Are you hearing me in this place? Lot found that out quickly, quickly because he couldn't hang with Abram no more. God said, get thee from him. And he once he moved, he was in a terrible shape. Why? Because all the word that Abram had been teaching and bringing forth never rested with him. And until the word of God is rested in you as your source of liberty, you're never going to see the fruit come up that you've been asking God for. You're never going to see the change that you've been asking him for. But once you allow that word be to become the new you, you stretch out and enlarge across your territory and you move the same way that God moves. Somebody say redemption. You get a pass. <laughs> there are things that's supposed to be on your timeline that because of your works, God gave you a pass. Oh, Lord, I'm trying to help. I'm trying to reach somebody here. What you're going to do this year, many of you had it on your list to do five years from now. Three years from now, 10 years from now, you were going to wait till you get to the States. You was going to wait till you move location. You was going to wait till you move someplace else. You was going to wait till this significant event takes place or happen in your life. But God says time now. Because the very time has been redeemed and I gave you a pass. Oh, man, I don't know if I'm reaching but one or two in this place. You have to understand that what you're doing, not just how much you're doing, what you're doing in God matters on his timeline, not yours. And what God's trying to put in the earth in 15, he ain't got time for your resolution of 16. He wants to get things in now, so he's looking for a people that's ready to move time now. Faith is not yesterday. Faith is now. Are you hearing me? Am I helping? You can start out the best project. Look real good. Have all the investors and everything that's ready to roll. But you forgot something. If so much as a screw was, was corrupted, you're going to find that whole plan to be headed back to the recall line. 
Are you hearing me? That's why you got to found it in God. If not, it's going to get recalled. Because there's no foundation to support what you're doing. It's not that you're not doing a good thing. It's, watch this. It's not that you're not doing something that's really in your destiny. It's that you moved it without God. So you didn't have a seed to do what you're doing. Are you hearing me in this place? You didn't have a seed to do what you were doing. Therefore, everything that was going to be produced came out flawed. So you end up with a flawed system called corruption. And you're like, why is it every time this keep coming out like this? Why is it every time? Because you're running alone and you're not lining this thing up with God and, and move. You're do- I, I, I've seen this happen time and time again. You can run and do a good thing, a biblical thing. Let me say it like that. You can see a, a thing in the Bible. Do a biblical thing and run with it without God. You're going to be in the recall line. But I see it in the Bible. <laughs> but I did it without God. I moved, I, I moved without God. I, I, I never prayed to God about it. I never talked to God about it. I never asked him which direction, where I'm going. I never asked him to remove the corruption out of it so it would go along as being incorruptible. I never asked him to come in and ch- and move the whole house from a state of corruption to a state of incorruption. I never asked him. You ask the Lord, come into my house and just turn it upside down, change it, everything. Do what you got to do so that this so that this thing here that I see that is profitable unto me, it will go forward because it's you that make it rich. It's you that give me the power to get well. It is you that's going to take this thing and promote it, Lord God, so that somebody will see the value in it and move on it. And, and, and they can't stop themselves. They can't help themselves but move on it because they're going to see God, the God in you. Are you hearing me? Your principles will take you off real fast. You'll take off, but you move without God. It's recall time. Are you hearing me? So the first thing, why redemption? Corruption. Corruption. A lot of us lose because of corruption. We take off on a very fast run. We let corruption have its place. And we move with corruption in line and never ask God to remove the corruption. Never ask God to give me a good seed in this principle. Never ask God, give me a good seed in this business. Lord. Let this business be a good seed. Let it be a good seed so that the fruit thereof will be good fruit. Let it be a profitable seed so that when I put it in a place to where it can, it can be manifested into the earth, it will come forward and be profitable unto me. Are you hearing me? I've seen people take something that didn't look like it was going to be much of anything. Next thing you know, more than a million people done bought it. Or more than a million people were interested in it. You know, uh, things that the top 10 richest people desire and won't need are not things they made themselves. There are things, folks sitting here just like you, that had an attitude change, that had a destiny change, a heart change. and, and they, they, That's what they're looking for. That's what they want. Thinkers, people that can think, have wisdom, the wisdom of God, and, and put things forth in the earth and not afraid to do so. Many of you, God, have already put things of profit into your hands, and you're scared to move with it. You scared to do anything with it. But what if it don't? What if it don't? No, put it in the hands of God and move. Put it in the hands of God and go forward. As long as you move with God. It's not something that can can come to hurt you or or to challenge you or to take you out. Are you hearing me? You put it in the hands of God and say, Lord, I'm moving. I'm moving because I, I got a word. I got a prayer. I have a connection with you. I see the vision you've given me in it. Now I'm moving forward in what you've given me because I understand that it's time sensitive. 
Yes, I wanted to wait and do it in my time, but no, I'm, uh, I like your time better. <laughs> Are you hearing me? So the first being corruptible, Galatians chapter 4. And verse number four. Galatians chapter four, verse four. It says here, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his what? Made of a woman, made under the law. To do what? To redeem them that were. If Now, if the law was good enough, why would I need to be redeemed from under it? That we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth, watch this, here's your, here's your key right here. God has sent forth the spirit of his son, where? Into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Watch this now. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. So watch this. And I know this busts up your religion like something crazy. I've seen people who have been saved for 20, 30 years. And they still can only see themselves as just being a servant. Ooh. I just want to be a servant. Well, God don't want you to stay a servant. Are we reading? We're reading the same Bible, right? Is that in your Bible? Did we just read that? God don't want you to stay a servant. Through the process Oh, Lord, I, I know I'm going to get all kind of hits on this when this go out. Watch this. The process of a servant receiving the spirit of God or the spirit of Christ into their hearts transforms them from being a servant <laughs> to being a son. And if you're a son, that makes you a are we reading that right? Where did we miss this in the word of God? I'm loving this. So I am not just a servant anymore because that would definitely give me just a, watch this, uh, would give me a different mentality. Because a servant knoweth not what his master doeth. Only a son knows what his master does. So God can fill a son with things that the master is doing, but he doesn't feel a servant with that. <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm shouting inside right now. Uh, watch this. The same qualities that God put in a son is not what he put in a servant. Are you hearing me? Because a servant doesn't get involved with what the master is doing. A servant only just does what he's, oh, help me in this place. So when you fill your life with people that just want to do what I'm told, you fill yourself with people that are not going anywhere. Oh, Lord, help me through this place. I wish somebody would help me preach this. And the weezer, the, this is another reason why we can't find our place out of this redemption into a place of profitability because our whole life, uh, people are just like robots. They can only do what they're programmed 
They can only do what they're told. If you don't tell them, they can't see with a profitability because a servant can't see profitability. But when you put it in a son, a son said, wait a minute, I can see what you see. I can now do what you're doing. I need you to show me more because I want to practice moving as you move. See, when you take a step, a servant don't take a step. A servant just sweep from where you, you stepped. Oh, Lord, help me through this place. Watch this. Because that's the only thing the servant can see. And he has no, uh, he has no forward progress into becoming a son. So he just become comfortable at just cleaning up behind he just become comfortable in just being behind. A son doesn't want to be behind. A son want to be at the table. A son want to be with the father. A son want to do as the father. A son want to ask, Dad, can I go? Mother, can I roll with you? Can I go? Can you show? A son wants to go, but a servant will just want to stay there. Are you hearing me? Don't get me wrong. It does have its place. But the objection, the, the objective is not to stay just in a servant. Because I want to put the spirit of Christ in you that transform you from just doing what you're told. <laughs> I want you to be able to move independently on your own. To be able to carry your own weight. To be able to fight your own battles. If I put the spirit of Christ in you, then you can fight your own battles. You can, you, you're able to pray your own breakthrough. You're able to cast your own devils out. You're able to move with your own healing because the son understands that what's been inherited into him uh, is the same thing that's in the father. Oh, that's praiseworthy right there. But a son understands that when, I, when I'm a son, I'm not just some servant. I'm somebody the father knows by name. Are you hearing me? And he's given me proper positioning, proper emplacement. He says, I'm an heir. <laughs> Is that what it say? He said, when the spirit of Christ rests in my heart, I'm an heir to the throne. Heirs get the same treatment <laughs> Are you hearing me? Heirs get the same favor. When they find out that you're an heir, You get the same authorization as the king. Because for sure the heir are not going to speak ill of the king. For sure the heir is not going to do something that the king wouldn't do. Because the king knows the heir and the heir knows the king. Are you hearing me? Because the father is in the son and the son is in the... Are you hearing me? So for sure they're not going to break ranks. What does that do? What did this do? It says here in verse number verse number five said we were redeemed from under the law. What was that whole law thing? That was the curse. That was the product that brought on the curse. That was the curse fruit. That was the cursed product. So, he redeemed us from under the curse only one way through the spirit of Christ being in your heart because he didn't just want you to be a servant under the law and then come and, and only being a servant under Christ. 
but he wanted you to move from just being a servant to being a son. Are you hearing me? Because your whole transition had to line up with your new positioning, with where he placed you. Are you hearing me? For you to be seated on his right hand in Christ Jesus meant that you had to be a son because servants don't sit on the right hand of the king. Boy, am I just over, am I over the top today? I'm trying to give you some thought process. This is kingdom-like stuff here now. <laughs> but in order for that to take place, I have to have the spirit of Christ in my heart because only the spirit of Christ is what's recognizable in the kingdom of God. And too many people try to do things that are, that's not recognized by the kingdom of God because the spirit of Christ is not in them. So they move, they don't move as a person, as a son, where the spirit of Christ is in them. They still move as a person that's under the law. Oh, Lord. You continue to move under the law, that, that puts you back under the curse. So everything you're working at is still corruptible. It is still cursed because you're still operating as a person that's under the law. How is it you don't pray before you go? Oh, Lord. How is it you don't see God before you do it? How is it? Because you're still operating under the law. You only need God on Sundays and midweek. Oh, Lord, help us in this place. Can I get you somewhere? So that second one being he moved it from under the curse. The first one was we were operating under corruption. The next one we were operating under the law still. Because we haven't realized that Christ has redeemed us from under the law. So let the spirit of Christ be in our heart. Are y'all hearing me? But this curse of the law is like a virus. It's atmospheric and it's land based. It's like a virus. It's in the air. Anything you touch is all on the land. That's where the curse of the law is like. And as you move, you're moving under that curse. You're moving under that curse. You're moving under that curse. The moment we receive Christ Jesus, he take us and put us above the curse. Because all things must be under our feet. So I don't move in a curse. I move above a curse. I don't move in a situation. I move above a situation. I'm trying to help somebody. I don't move in pain. I move above the pain. Are you hearing me? I don't move in naysayers and with naysayers. I move above naysayers. Are you hearing me? I don't hang out with the enemy. I move above the enemy. Are you hearing me? Why? Because Christ was lifted up by the enemy. <laughs> Are you hearing me? <laughs> Watch this. Isaiah. Not Isaiah, I'm sorry. Luke chapter 1. And we'll go there in a second. But this whole virus thing, it was like a, it's like a full domain working against you. That virus-like curse of the law is a, like a full domain that's working against you. At every step, it's working against you. Filled with, you know, death traps of hurt and agony, sickness and pains and diseases and you, you name it. It's filled with all of these things. Uh, that's what the curse being under the law is like. But Christ came to remove us from under those things because it represents what every, it, it's everything that punishment represents. The, the law. Being under that law, you know, the law was was where punishment was given for the original sin. It would then he he gave them, you know, he put everybody under the law. <clears throat> that was part of the punishment of man to go under the law. But what's so great about God in Jesus Christ uh, in Isaiah uh, uh, fifty three says he was he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for 
uh, our iniquities. Uh, the chastisement of, of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Everything that dealt with the punishment, that's why we see Christ took it on. Because it was the redeeming process in saying, the beating that I'm getting, they don't get it. The torment that they're getting, that I'm getting, they don't deserve it. They don't get it. Are you hearing me? The hurt that I'm taking on, they don't get it. Are you hearing me? The everything stemming from the original birth, they don't keep it. Are y'all hearing me? Everything coming through the old bloodline, I got a new bloodline. They don't keep it. Are you hearing me? Redeem meaning you don't get to keep the hand that was dealt to you. Oh, help me in this place. You don't get the hand that was dealt to you. You don't get to keep it. You get to throw that hand in and get a new hand. And every card says, redeem uh, one uh, under deliverance, redeem one under salvation, redeem one under healing, redeem one under miracles, redeem one under, under grace, Re redeem one under joy. Are you hearing me? God's trying to redeem you totally. And you get to play that hand. <laughs> I don't know if y'all ever played, but when you got that one that's, that's, the, that's really fixing to win that round, you bring it up and you slam that thing down. You can't wait till it's your turn to play. Tell somebody, I can't wait. I can't wait till it's my turn to play. You, you don't put the other cards down and you holding that one. You stick it to your forehead and you come on around here. Yes. Bring it on around right there. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Come on around. Oh, let me stress for this one. <laughs> That's where your redemption should feel. So, oh, no, I stretch for this one. I seen this before. I stretched for this one. I threw in that old hand and I know everything stemming from under the law. God has redeemed me so I don't have to keep this hand that has been dealt to me. Are you hearing me? Tell two or three people, I don't have to keep that hand. I ain't got to keep that hand. I ain't got to keep that hand. I'm throwing that hand in. I know when to fold them. <laughs> Throw that hand in. Luke chapter 1. So that second one that was under the curse of the law. And then I'm going to deal with your past. Somebody said, my past. My past. I, that's really fun. Now, we done dealt with all that and hadn't even made it to you yet. Ooh. Hope you didn't think I was talking about you the last two. I ain't made it to you yet, the person, the individual. I'm just now making it to you. And then what? We, we're going to close on you. Can we do that? Just now making it to you. So we spent time in corruption that I had nothing to do with. We spent time under the law, which I had nothing to do with. I wasn't even here when the law was formed. Now I'm finally making it to me after being redeemed from under the law and under corruption, under a bad seed. Are you hearing me? You're in Luke chapter 1, verse number 60. Uh, uh, uh. Verse number 68. Luke chapter 1, verse number 68. And I'm going to get you out of here because I think I'm giving you too much today. Y'all getting too much. Y'all subject to shout while you're driving. Anything could get dangerous out there. <laughs> it, it hits you along the road. You're like, whoo, and let go of the steering wheel. And Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm letting go of the wheel. <laughs> Give me one more chance. I love that song. Oh, yeah, I like that song. That's a beautiful song. We Luke chapter 1, verse 68. What's the first word? Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, 
For he hath visited and redeemed his people. He visited us through Christ. All of him in Christ paid a visit. So somebody, he was here. Next verse. And hath raised up a horn of. Now he didn't leave the horn of salvation down, but he did what? He raised it up because his intentions were never for you to stay down. <laughs> Are you hearing me? So he raised the horn of salvation so that those that receive salvation would raise with the horn. Are you hearing me? For us in the house of his servant David. Next verse. And he spake by the mouth of his holy prophet. So you got to get it from some man or woman of God. You got to get this kind of stuff from somebody that God recognizes, that the heavenly recognizes as being a son, an heir. Are you hearing me? What's that? Which have been since the world. So, so we've been here all along. We just started preaching last week. The wisdom you getting is the same wisdom that was taught all along from the beginning. I didn't make up this wisdom and start giving it to you this morning. Are y'all hearing me? I didn't spend all night up studying. People have me all the time. He spent all day on that. No. I spent all day meditating with God. Wherever I went, I was still meditating. Wherever I go, I was still in commune with him. Wherever I went, I was still praying with him. Everywhere I went, I was still in connection with him. Are you hearing me? That's how I prepare for a message like this. That's wherever I go. Still in connection. When did a vow renewal last night, I was still in connection. People were like, you're kind of spaced. <laughs> I'm kind of spaced. Oh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. You're kind of reserved, you know, cord more cordial people. <laughs> and the ones that's just, you know, they don't mind committing a fire. They say, you're kind of spaced. But praise the Lord. <laughs> that's all you can say. <laughs> They're going to tell you the truth. But you got to love them. Because at least you know how, how, how they really perceiving you. <laughs> so I had to straighten up a little bit. <laughs> But that's how you perpetuate it. Which have been since the world what? Began. Next verse. That we should be from. Uh, so we're not just saved so we can go to heaven. Because if that was the case, the day you got saved, you'd have lifted right on up through the building and went on off into the cloud somewhere. He said, no, I'll tell, tell somebody that ain't what he's doing. We're trying to make sense of some stuff. He said, you're saved from our enemies and from the what? Of who? All the haters. So you mean the haters had a hand on me? I didn't know they had a hand on me. How did they get a hand on me? They got a hand on you through hate. <laughs> Isn't it somehow hate has a hand? <laughs> oh, Lord, you got to hear me for a minute. What is your past? You ever thought about that? What is my past? Ask yourself that. What is my past? So in actuality... Your past is the hand of the enemy. Now think about everything that has happened to you prior to you receiving Christ Jesus. And then you can see the hand of the enemy all in it. And you'll stand back on the outside looking in saying, I can't believe I used to do that. I can't believe I used to say that. I can't believe I used to talk like that. I can't believe I used to be caught up in that. I can't be, you can't believe it because it, your past, you were operating in the hand of the enemy. Are you hearing me? Because that's what your past is. The hand of the enemy. Oh Lord. I don't know if y'all got that. Let me do it a different way. 
No man is tempted above that which he is able to bear. But when a man is tempted, the Bible declares, he is pulled away from his own lust and then enticed. That's what the Bible says. He's drawn away from his own lust and then enticed. Enticed with what? With what he used to, which is his, his past. The devil don't tempt you with your future. So if I got a future that's calling on me, for sure it's not the devil. He don't tempt you with a future. He tempts you with something you've seen before, something you've lived before, something that's made you mad before, something that's made you sick before, something that gets on your nerves. That's what he tempts you with because he has the hand of your hater. Are you listening to me? Somebody say, unhand me. <laughs> well, God's trying to tell you that uh, 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 there's a change of rights that took place. And this change of rights in Christ Jesus says that no longer can the enemy have a hand on you. Uh, no longer can the enemy keep you in a place of bondage, a place to where you can move, a place to where you can only see yourself working for the rest of your life. No longer can the enemy keep that hanging above your head. Uh, God's trying to put you to where you're released from your enemy and released from his hand, released from your haters in the the name of Jesus Christ. God say he has to release you. Every word he speaks, spoke against you has to be released from it. Everything he did to you, you must be released from it. Everything he's been tormenting you with, you must be released from it. Everything he's using to throw up in your face of his existence, he must let you go. Are you hearing me? Tell somebody he must release me. I see my redemption and he must release me. Hallelujah. I see my redemption. I see my redeemer. And that enemy must release me because I have rights of freedom. I have a right that says I can walk on this earth without being tormented, without being made sick, without being made strange, without being talked about and hurt in any kind of way. I have a right to go to sleep without being tormented in my dreams. I have a right to see the vision that God has given me without it being obscured with a bunch of things from my past. I wish I had two or three people that would stand on my feet, on your feet and say release me. Release me. You tell that devil to let you go. Somebody shout release me. Come on give him praise in this place. <laughs> 